Once upon a time, there was a baby named S. To most people, S grew up on a normal street in a normal town. But inside her house, S and her family were especially special. In fact, they were the champion breeders of the largest predator habitat in North America. S's whole life, she grew up helping her parents with the essential household chores to take care of their family pets. Feeding the pet crocodiles, herding the wild boars, grooming the lion's mane, petting the scorpions, cleaning the hippopotamus moat surrounding the house, and synchronized swimming lessons in the piranha pool. Some people might say, Those animals are too dangerous. Or even, People and predators don't mix. But S always followed the rules, wore her protective armor, and treated all creatures with respect and responsibility. Generations of S's family had never had a problem, and between S and her parents, they watched over dozens of predators. In fact, the three of them owned over half the predators in the entire town. After all, the bigger the danger, the bigger the responsibility, and S was the most responsible child. That's why for years, S had always listened to her parents, done her homework, and saved her allowance so that one day she might buy her very own pet snake. S had researched everything there was to know about those legless vertebrates. She was even the five millionth member of the National Reptile Association, founded in 1871 as the premier reptile education organization in the world. But one summer, while S was patching the wild boar's nest, she noticed a squiggly movement under the straw. To her surprise, a baby serpent was hiding under the warm debris, scared and alone. It didn't look dangerous. In fact, in the sunlight, it looked beautiful, almost friendly. But S knew better than to pick it up on her own. After all, over 8,000 children go to the hospital every year because they find a reptile and don't act responsibly. So S shouted for her parents and an adult safely transported the small snake to the great Serpentarium where it could be fed and found a good home. But S didn't want to give the serpent to someone else. Didn't she find the serpent? Shouldn't she get to keep it? After all, it didn't hurt her. In fact, it smiled. That was her snake. She knew it. So the next day, S sorted her allowance with the money from her tooth fairy jar and snuck back to the great serpentarium to buy the snake that she had fallen in love with. The shop owner said the snake could be hers after a three-day waiting period. This seemed very reasonable to S, so after three quick days, she returned to the store with her favorite backpack to transport the snake home to hide in her room. The rest of the summer was paradise as they took sun baths in the window and squirmed in the bed covers. S's parents didn't need to know about her pet. After all, S was a responsible snake owner. But then the summer ended and it was time for the school year to begin again. S was sad to leave her snake at home alone all day. She got up especially early to complete her chores and trapped special bugs for her servant to eat. That day at recess, the other boys and girls were talking about their adventures over the summer. I got a pet snake. S stated proudly, but one boy responded. Ha! A pet snake? It must be slippery. Another scolded. Uh, I've seen snakes in the movies. They bite. Oh no! Explained S. Not if you're careful. But many of the children started laughing. You're crazy. They have teeth. So does a dog. And a cat has claws. As long as the pet owner is responsible, everyone is safe. But as his classmates began walking away in disbelief, whispering behind her back. She's such a liar. One said. Probably doesn't even have a snake. Said another. What a stupid pet. S was angry and hurt. Why did they laugh? My snake is not dangerous. That night, S cried to her little serpent in its special glass case. No one understands. If they could just meet you, they'd see how fun and practical a serpent can be. I'll show them. So the next morning, S grabbed her trusty backpack and boarded the bus with a special stowaway. As she rode in the back seat, she thought, Car accidents happen all the time and we still drive them. Why would anyone be afraid of my little snake? 
As she passed the metal detectors at the entrance of the school, she wondered, Look how safe the school can be. See, no one should be afraid. And as she hung her backpack on the classroom pegboard, she thought, See how trusting everyone is to leave their bags hanging all day? This is a truly safe place. Then she thought, It's going to be a long day. I better give my little friend some air. She opened the zipper just enough and whispered, I can't wait for everybody to meet you. The clock ticked slowly. S squirmed in her seat, class after class, hour after hour. S could barely wait for recess, until finally, it was time. S ran to her backpack, opened the front pocket, but her snake was gone. Frantically, she searched the other pockets. Nothing. S dropped to the floor to look under desks, behind chairs, inside shoes. No. S thought, Someone stole my snake. I bet one of the other kids was jealous and went in my bag. Who did this? But S was interrupted by a sudden scream. Then another. And another. Chaos broke out as students ran into the room to escape the terrible danger outside. The teacher secured the door and hushed the students to the back of the room. Some hid in the closet, others under their desks. Many were crying. S looked out the window more afraid than she'd ever been. She closed her eyes and prayed. Her little snake was safe. Outside, the school was on lockdown. Police surrounded the building in riot gear. Helicopters circled overhead. Word traveled fast as paramedics, reporters, parents, and looky-loos crowded outside. A few brave teachers carefully snuck some children out of a window. We need an ambulance. They cried. What happened? The crowd pleaded. A snake's taken refuge in the gymnasium. It bit this boy. The other children are still in danger. You've got to do something. News of the killer snake traveled the world as the boy was taken to the hospital. The press ran breaking coverage with pictures and statistics of random snakes. Snake bite became the number one hashtag on social media. The National Reptile Association suggested sending friendly snakes into the school to stop the bad snake. And the mayor said he would think good thoughts for the students. Then the police surrounded the gymnasium, but none of them had ever caught a snake before. Did they even have the proper training or tools? They needed to stop the danger, but it was also important they protect themselves. Slowly, silently, they entered the gymnasium. Crying at the bow of the basketball court was a small child. Was she hurt? Was she alone? She was crouched over something small on the floor. But as the police approached, she spun around and shouted, Get back! He's scared! He didn't mean to hurt anyone! The police were stunned. But then a voice from the back of the room gently broke the silence. It's okay, S. Mommy's here. S's parents walked forward dressed in their protective armor. They responsibly circled the snake and scooped it into a small glass jar. Voila! The all-clear sign was given, and teachers and students ran outside to their parents and loved ones. S's parents kneeled down and looked at S. What do we always say? S protested. I was responsible. Things just got out of hand. That boy wouldn't have gotten bit if he'd been more responsible. They hugged S and spoke softly. It's not his responsibility, S. He didn't choose to bring a snake to school. You did. At home, we wear protective armor. We have special enclosures for each animal. Every year, we get permits and inspections. If we don't follow the rules, we put other people in danger. But that's so much work. S pouted. It's not different than the work to wear glasses or to drive a car. It's a little work for a lot of trust. Later that day, S and her parents took the snake back to the Great Serpentarium where it was safe to slither in a large glass case with plenty of food and lots of other reptile friends. The store owner suggested